Thank you. I'm uh, going to move straight on to um, Doug is going to make some quick remarks on uh, adaptation strategies and then we will have a, a panel discussion so there'll be time for questions to Oshin as part of that. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, as Siobhan said, I don't intend to speak for very long at all because I think having discussion will probably be more interesting. But I did want to just um, bring it back to the, the concept of adaptation, which is what um, one of the key things that we'll be looking at tomorrow. The programme, this EU cost action programme, is looking at climate change and migration. And the workshop we're holding tomorrow is exactly as Cosman was talking about. How can migration be an adaptation strategy? And I think it's also important to talk about adaptation because for a long time it was a dirty word. You know, you have the dichotomy between the mitigation and the adaptation. So the mitigation, let's try to reduce the actual level of greenhouse gas emissions. And then the adaptation, people perhaps felt that well, that was giving in. That was saying, okay, climate change is happening, that means we can allow the polluters to pollute because we can all live on stilts or on barges or something. And so I think there's been a change in the last couple of years where recognising that if we live in a, an environment in a climate that's changing, well then maybe we need to look at how we adapt to that. Okay? So I'm not going to go into too much detail. I, Diego apologised for being a lawyer. I'm another lawyer. I should maybe apologise for being another man. I am very <laughs> conscious that we've had four um, male presenters. That's a, the way it worked out. Um, however, you may recognise this picture. Um, this was the architect's impression of this building, the building we're sitting in, for those of you who perhaps don't know this building <coughs> so well. This was this building six weeks after it was formally opened. Okay, so when we're talking about going from the global, from looking at the case studies of the UN University project, I want to bring it very much down to the local. This very room we're sitting in was flooded. So in November 20, 2009, when we had the floods, this room was flooded. There's lecture theatres here which are raked at an angle, which were several metres full of water. Okay, so what, we, what had to happen after the floods was adaptation to this building. There was physical adaptation. So we had to improve the flood, the physical flood barriers that were put in place around this building. So hopefully, if the river rises again, there won't be the same egress of water into the building. But we also have to look at the adaptation of policies. Okay? How do we change the policies and the structures? So not just the physical environment, but how do we change the institutional and policy structures. And as you may know, UCC is currently suing the ESB, the Electrical Supply Board, um, for 90 million euros on the basis of the floods that took place here. And that's perhaps a debate for another day, a discussion for another day. But the impact and the outcome of that court case, I think, will be very interesting in looking to see how do stakeholders at all level ensure that policies that they have in place can adapt to a changing environmental situation where we may well have an increased frequency, an increased severity of extreme weather events, such as flooding. And so how do we manage the water coming through the Inniscara Dam? How do we ensure that we don't end up with flooding in Cork City? Okay? So when we talk about adaptation, it's perhaps not just this um, negative view that there was of it Previously, we need to just look at it from a practical perspective. So on that basis, I want to just very quickly talk about three levels. Okay? So from the global, the regional, then the national. So the UNFCCC, the Cancun Adaptation um, Framework, was established in 2010. So that was at the Conference of the Parties in Mexico. Uh, it was the 16th COP. And it was important because that was the first time that adaptation had been given the similar weighting to the mitigation efforts. So it was recognition that we need to look at uh, mitigation and adaptation at the same level. Okay? And the, the Cancun Adaptation Framework set out a range of priorities or principles for how states should adapt um, or adopt adaptation strategies. And it also set up an institutional structure within the UNFCCC with an adaptation committee so that there can be an ongoing focus 
at a global level on where adaptation measures are going? How do we ensure a country-driven, gender-sensitive, participatory and fully transparent approach, for example? Okay. How do we base it on best scientific knowledge, but also recognising that actually local indigenous knowledge may well be very fundamental to ensuring a respectful adaptation to a local environment situation? Um, if we move quickly to the EU, the EU followed on from the Cancun adaptation strategy, and so it created its own strategy in 2013. Okay? Um, it's well recognised that most adaptation will take place at the local level. So, I mean, Margaret Desmond and Tara Shine, in their report here in the Irish context, were very clear setting out that it, most measures are going to be at the adaptation, adaptation at the local level, and it's about ensuring the interrelationship and the coordination, both within sectors, so within agriculture, within energy, within transport, and then across those sectors as well. And so this is where the concept of having an adaptation framework in place is so fundamental to ensure that we have that interconnection, that interrelationship between and across the different sectors. So the EU adaptation strategy sets out three, three areas um, for action. First of all, promoting actors w within the member states or by the member states. So encouraging member states to establish national adaptation frameworks and providing funding for them and support for them to do that. So at the moment there's 16 of the 28 EU member states have adopted national adaptation frameworks and Ireland has one in place although it's being revised. The EU strategy also looks at climate proofing EU actions. Okay, so we have the national, the national level with the member states but also any actions that the EU is taking. The EU strategy accepts that EU actions have to be climate proofed from an adaptation perspective. And we have to use scientific knowledge, best knowledge, to inform decision making at all levels, at the EU and at the national. And so Oshin's just been talking about the, the climate action and low carbon bill. Um, one of the headings specifically, so we have the, the, carbon act, the, the low carbon action plan in heading five, but then heading six is the national adaptation framework. And so the bill also sets out how are we going to have structurally mechanisms in place to ensure that we are also looking at adaptation measures in the Irish context. So both by having a national adaptation framework and then having sectoral um, adaptation strategies in place. And what the bill says at the moment is that the minister will publish with not at least or, or no, no later than 24 months after the bill comes into effect, the national adaptation framework. But interestingly, we, we already have, from December 2012, a national adaptation framework that Phil Hogan had published. And so the work that's going on at the moment is to revise that. And I'm very conscious there's people in the audience who know much more about this than um, our own um, here in UCC. We have a very strong adaptation focus. I'm from the Environmental Research Institute, the Coastal and Marine Research Centre, and I know that Dr. Stefan Gray has recently been appointed to advise the government on the sectoral adaptation strategies. So here at a local level, or within the national level, I think we have an opportunity to engage in this process at the moment to try and ensure that adaptation, how we change the policies, change the things that we do to protect the most vulnerable in society, to use the climate justice perspective, is embedded within these frameworks, these national adaptation frameworks. And if we want to think about what actions we can take at a local level, to come down from the national level, one of the things the EU adaptation strategy does is to promote the covenant of mayors. Okay, so this is where mayors of cities and regions across the EU commit to low carbon initiatives. And it's interesting that Cork County Council has signed up to the covenant of mayors, but Cork City Council hasn't. Okay, so although Roscommon um, and Waterford, South County Dublin and Dublin have signed up, Cork City Council haven't signed up to the Covenant of Mayors. If people are wanting a very local action, maybe that's something we should be looking at our local representatives to do.